Hey guys, tonight we dive into the mysterious world of Neanderthals and their incredible survival tactics. Imagine you're a Neanderthal, standing tall in the middle of a brutal Ice Age storm, feeling the sharp, freezing winds cut through your clothing. Your senses are sharp, your nose detects a distant animal's scent, your ears catch the faint rustle of a movement in the snow, and your vision is adapted to the low light, snowy conditions. But here's the thing. Did Neanderthals' heightened senses give them the upper hand against the unforgiving Ice Age? Or were they just trying to keep up with an environment that didn't play nice? Before we dig deeper, hit that like button and subscribe if you're loving these prehistoric tales. Drop a comment with your location and time. You won't believe what's coming next. Now, grab a cozy spot, maybe some headphones, and let's uncover the past together. Imagine the stark landscape of the Ice Age a frozen expanse where survival demanded more than just sharp tools and brute strength. For the Neanderthals, survival hinged on their ability to sense their surroundings. Heightened senses weren't just a bonus, they were a necessity. The environment, harsh and unpredictable, made those sensory adaptations vital for finding food, avoiding predators, and navigating treacherous terrain. Let's start with their sense of hearing. Recent studies of Neanderthal fossilized skulls reveal they had an advanced auditory system, shaped by an environment that demanded acute hearing. Their middle ear bones were shaped to pick up sounds at different frequencies than modern humans, a direct result of the icy winds and howling predators they had to hear coming from miles away. One recent study from the University of Cambridge in 2022 revealed that the shape of their ear canal and inner ear structure was adapted to hear both high-pitched sounds, like the call of birds or distant predators, and low-frequency rumbles, like the thunder of approaching mammoths. This would have made them superb listeners, especially when it came to hearing prey or rivals. Imagine walking through a snowstorm and hearing the faintest crack in the ice the kind of sound most humans would miss. For Neanderthals, that sound could mean the difference between dinner and danger. Next, let's talk about their noses. Neanderthals had big, broad noses. You might think they were just for show, but it's much more functional than that. Their noses were built to filter out the cold, dry air of Ice Age Europe. Research from the University of Barcelona suggests that the larger nasal cavities help warm and humidify the icy air they breathed in, allowing for better oxygenation. But it's not just about warmth. Their noses were also finely tuned to smell in ways that modern humans might struggle to comprehend. When we talk about surviving in the wild, your sense of smell is crucial for detecting the scent of game, danger, or even other people. Imagine walking through the snow and sensing the presence of a mammoth herd from miles away, or even spotting a rival band of Homo sapiens. Neanderthals could pick up on all these scents, giving them a strategic advantage. Their sense of sight is another story entirely. Neanderthals were hyper-adapted to dim, low-light conditions. Think about it. In an Ice Age world where sunlight could be scarce, especially during the long winters, Neanderthals needed to make the most of whatever light they could get. Fossil evidence shows that Neanderthal eyes were built to see in low-light conditions, with larger, more forward-facing eyes than modern humans. They could detect movement in the shadows much faster than we can today, perfect for spotting predators or prey in the twilight of the tundra. It's not just about detecting danger, it's about responding to it. Neanderthal eyes with their high visual acuity in low-light environments, paired with their hypersensitive hearing and smelling abilities, painted a picture of a creature finely tuned to its surroundings. In short, they were equipped with an array of sensory tools that made them perfect hunters and survivors in one of the most brutal climates on Earth. Now, take a moment to think about how Neanderthal sensory abilities shaped their daily lives. They didn't just rely on tools and fire. They used their bodies, their ears, their noses, and their eyes to adapt to an unforgiving world. And in doing so, they mastered their environment. So, did Neanderthals use their heightened senses to communicate? That's the million-dollar question. Stick around for the next section to discover how their brains and physical adaptations might have influenced their communication or lack thereof. Could they have had a sophisticated language? Let's find out. All right, let's shift gears. 
We've explored Neanderthal's acute sensory abilities, but now it's time to dive into something equally mind-boggling. How did these ancient humans communicate with one another? Could Neanderthals talk? Or did they rely on primitive gestures, grunts, and signals? It's a question that's puzzled scientists for decades. But here's where it gets fascinating. New fossil evidence is rewriting everything we thought we knew about Neanderthal communication. Turns out, these ancient cousins of ours might have had a lot more going on upstairs than we ever imagined. Before we get into the science, hit that like button if you're intrigued by how Neanderthals may have shared their world with one another. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. Trust me, you'll want to stay with us for what comes next. Drop a comment below about what you think Neanderthal communication might have sounded like. Let's dive in. Imagine you're sitting by a crackling fire, a Neanderthal camp in the distance. The air is crisp, and the wolves' howls echo through the snowy night. A group of Neanderthals huddle together, sharing a meal, while others craft tools or prepare for the hunt. They're communicating, no doubt, whether it's by gesture, touch, or something more. We've always assumed their communication was rudimentary at best, but new studies are challenging that assumption. Recent findings, particularly in Neanderthal hyoid bones, the small, horseshoe-shaped bone that supports the tongue, suggest Neanderthals were much closer to modern humans in their ability to speak. In 2021, a study published in the journal Nature confirmed that the hyoid bone of Neanderthals was strikingly similar to that of Homo sapiens. This is a game changer. Why? Well, the hyoid bone is crucial for speech production. In humans, it enables us to produce a wide range of sounds, from vowels to consonants. If Neanderthals had the same type of hyoid bone, it means they might have been able to produce speech similar to us, not just grunts or simple vocalizations. They might have been talking, in their own way, much more than we ever thought. So, what does this mean for how Neanderthals communicated? The discovery of complex cave art in places like Spain and France also suggests that Neanderthals were capable of more than just functional communication. The art, simple yet striking images of animals, hands, and geometric shapes, could very well have been forms of visual language or storytelling. Imagine a Neanderthal painting a scene of a mammoth hunt on the cave wall, not just for decoration, but to communicate a lesson or a shared history. Could their art have been a proto-form of written language? Or was it a way to pass down vital information about hunting grounds and seasonal migrations? And it doesn't stop there. Neanderthal brain anatomy also points to potential language capabilities. Studies show that Neanderthals had brain structures quite similar to Homo sapiens, particularly in the areas responsible for motor skills, social behavior, and even speech processing. A 2022 study using brain tissue reconstructions showed that Neanderthals had areas in their brains that could have allowed them to process complex social interactions, which is a key part of language development. They didn't just talk about the weather. They likely discussed hunting strategies, shared stories, and maybe even argued. But what about gestures? We know that even today, humans use nonverbal communication as much as we use words. Neanderthals likely used hand gestures, facial expressions, and body language to convey meaning. This is supported by studies of Neanderthal burial practices. They show a level of social complexity that requires more than simple grunts. The fact that Neanderthals buried their dead with flowers and organized their living spaces suggests a form of ritualized behavior, which implies they could communicate abstract concepts like death, respect, and memory. Here's the kicker. As we uncover more about Neanderthal life, it becomes clear that communication wasn't just about language. It was about connecting with others in ways we might still use today. Neanderthals had social structures, families, and networks, and their communication methods likely went far beyond the simple act of vocalizing. It would have been a mix of sound, gesture, and shared experiences. So, what does this mean for our understanding of human evolution? If Neanderthals could communicate in complex ways, it challenges the narrative that language was a unique trait of Homo sapiens. What if we didn't invent language, but shared it with a close relative? This opens up a flood of new questions. Could Neanderthals have taught early Homo sapiens how to communicate? 
Was there an exchange of knowledge, not just through genes, but through shared language? Now, here's something to think about. If Neanderthals had complex communication, did that influence their ability to form alliances with other species, like Homo sapiens? Could their interactions be more than just mating? Stay tuned for the next section, where we'll dive deep into the genetic evidence of interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens and explore how these encounters shaped our future. By now, you've learned that Neanderthals weren't just surviving. They were thriving in ways we never thought possible. But what happens when Homo sapiens, a new kind of human with different tools and social strategies, stumbles into Neanderthal territory? What happens when these two groups meet? Not just in passing, but in ways that intertwine their destinies forever. This is where things get even more fascinating. Before we dig into the real genetic drama, hit that like button if you're amazed by how Neanderthals weren't the brutish cavemen we've been led to believe. Don't forget to subscribe for more mind-blowing discoveries about our ancient ancestors. Drop a comment if you think we're more similar to Neanderthals than we've been taught. Now, let's jump into what happens when two worlds collide, literally. Imagine you're in the middle of an ice age landscape, surrounded by towering glaciers, dense forests, and vast tundras. Homo sapiens, modern humans like you, have traveled across frozen lands, pushed forward by an innate curiosity and the need to survive. You've made it to a new territory, a place teeming with unfamiliar creatures, new dangers, and, most importantly, other humans. But not just any humans, Neanderthals. They've lived here for over 400,000 years, carving out a life in the harshest of environments. You, however, are different, taller, leaner, with advanced tools and a deep network of social connections. And yet, something draws you to them. Maybe it's the fire they've built or the unexpected familiarity in their eyes. But you're not here just to exchange pleasantries. You're here to survive, and so are they. As you draw closer, the tension is palpable. You're both hunters, survivors. What's going to happen next? Will this be a clash, a fight for resources, or something entirely different? Let's look at the evidence of what actually did happen when these two groups met. Genetic interbreeding. First, let's talk about interbreeding. Yes, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did have babies together. It's been confirmed in recent genetic studies that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbred at multiple points over the course of their histories. You might be thinking, Wait, didn't Homo sapiens push Neanderthals to extinction? Well, it turns out, the story is far more complex. Genetic evidence shows that Homo sapiens didn't just wipe out Neanderthals. Instead, our ancestors absorbed them, culturally and genetically. Through the magic of genetics, we know that between 1-2% to of the DNA of people of non-African descent today is directly inherited from Neanderthals. That's right. When you look in the mirror, some of that ancient blood runs through your veins. But how did this happen? Recent studies in 2020 revealed that Neanderthal DNA isn't just a random blend of ancient genes. It plays an important role in shaping our bodies and immune systems. Some of these Neanderthal genes have been found to affect things like skin tone, hair color, and even immune responses. The genetic legacy of Neanderthals is embedded in modern humans in ways we're just beginning to understand. Take, for example, the gene that influences how our immune systems respond to viruses. It turns out, a significant portion of our immune resilience can be traced back to Neanderthal DNA. That's not something we've always associated with primitive humans, is it? But how did these two groups interact on a more personal level? What were these encounters like on the ground, beyond the scientific DNA markers? Well, imagine that first meeting between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. It wasn't just about survival, it was also about exchange. Cultural exchange. It's possible that Neanderthals shared their knowledge of the land, their techniques for surviving harsh winters, and their deep understanding of hunting and toolmaking. Maybe they learned a thing or two from Homo sapiens as well how to craft more advanced tools, or how to track game over vast distances. Or maybe, it was a simple exchange of warmth, food, and fire. A moment of human connection in a world where resources were scarce. 
One of the most profound discoveries from genetic research shows that Neanderthal Y chromosomes are very similar to those of Homo sapiens men, while mitochondrial DNA, passed down through mothers, from Neanderthal women is found in modern Homo sapiens. This means that Neanderthal women likely had children with Homo sapiens men, while Neanderthal men shared their genes with Homo sapiens women. This wasn't just a few isolated events. This was a pattern showing that interbreeding was common between the two species, especially during warmer periods between 270,000 and 100,000 years ago. So, while some scholars once argued that these interbreeding events were rare, the genetic evidence shows that it was far more frequent than we once thought. Did Neanderthals influence early Homo sapiens in ways that went beyond just genetics? Could their interactions be responsible for some of the traits we think of as uniquely human? Research suggests that Homo sapiens didn't just inherit physical traits from Neanderthals, they may have inherited cultural traits as well. From the development of advanced toolkits to intricate social behaviors, it's likely that Neanderthals had an impact on the way early Homo sapiens organized their societies. These cultural exchanges may have shaped our ancestors in ways that made them more adaptable to changing environments. So, let's answer the big question. What ultimately happened to the Neanderthals? The genetic evidence tells us that while Neanderthals were absorbed into the Homo sapiens gene pool, they eventually faded into history. Neanderthal populations had been declining due to harsh environmental conditions, competition for resources, and the rapid climatic shifts of the Ice Age. When Homo sapiens moved in, they brought with them a social network that stretched across vast distances, a more diverse range of tools and strategies for surviving in fluctuating climates. This competitive advantage, combined with interbreeding, meant that Neanderthals eventually disappeared, but not before leaving their mark on us. Deep in our genes, their legacy still lives on. Imagine this, a Neanderthal woman, with pale skin and strong hands, raises a child who carries the legacy of two species. A Homo sapiens man, with a lean frame and sharper tools, looks on as his child plays, unaware that they carry the blood of the people who came before them. They shared tools, stories, and maybe even the same fire. They were different, yet alike in ways that forever changed the course of human evolution. And here's the kicker. Despite the extinction of Neanderthals, we are still shaped by them in more ways than we ever realized. Their contribution to our immune systems, their influence on our culture, and the genetic remnants they left behind are part of who we are. So, when we look at ourselves, we're not just seeing Homo sapiens, we're also seeing Neanderthals. Their story is ours. And as you think about this, remember, humanity's history is full of twists, turns, and surprising encounters, many of which have shaped us in ways we still don't fully understand. As we close this journey into Neanderthal life, think about how their story mirrors our own, full of struggle, connection, and survival. Their extinction wasn't a defeat, but a blending of worlds, leaving us with traces of their blood, their knowledge, and their resilience. Next time you look in the mirror, remember, the legacy of Neanderthals is there, hidden in plain sight, in the very genes that make us who we are.